Thank you. Hello, hi everybody. Uh, so I'm Raphael Jor. I'm uh, the executive chairman of uh, Splio, and we are uh, one of uh, the partner of uh, China Connect, and we're very pleased and very proud to be the partner, one of the partner. I wanted to thank Laure and her team, but uh, she's not here, I think. So um, I want, I'd like to, first, my job, and um, Splio is a software company. We're focused on, we are a software editor specialized in CRM, focused and on retail, that's uh, the main point. But I'm not going to speak about Splio today because I'm the executive chairman, but my first job was psychologist. So I'd like to share with you my vision of the evolution of uh, retail. We're working in China since, uh, I think, uh, seven years. We learned a lot of, uh, of China from China, but we also, in Spain, in Italy, in Poland, in uh, Brazil, and in France also. So I'd like to share something with you to make a little trip 10 years ago and talk about retailers and what the problem they've got to face today. So the first thing, when you are a retailer, the, you've got to focus on first location, location, location. Where are you going to spot your, um, your, your stores? Second, you've got to focus on product. And as you may see on this picture, the product is not always adapted to the customer. We've got to, to they, they work about merchandising, they work about logistic, they work about content, content, very difficult, contextualization and services, more and more services. So that this is the main point. They're trying to work on it every day, every day, every day. But the problem is they work in silos. All their data are in silos, okay? You can talk about DMP, you can talk about a lot of things, but the truth is today, retailers are organized in silos in France, in Europe, even in the US and also in China. So you can talk about a lot of things, but the truth is they're still organized in silos. And the silos mean that, yes, it's me. So the silos mean that there is still a problem because they consider us offline people different from online people. I'm the same person, okay, but they don't know that. And they always don't uh, put together offline and online stores and people, prospects and customers, stores and people online. So it's still silos and silos. But by that time, in fact, the store was a sanctuary. Because 10 years ago, when uh, they were focused on this kind of thing, and precisely all the problem was to make people come to the store. But inside the store, it was a sanctuary. But this guy, you know him, made a little revolution in 2008 or 9, really, because it was the first iPhone 3, the real uh, smartphone, not before. And so the revolution, we know how to make revolution in France, as you know, uh, was very important because first, we, become, we became specialized, specialists in shopping, really specialists. We compared the things in stores. We share information on the network, on social networks, and so on, and so on. So, the the, this, this is the first big revolution for retailers. Very, very important for them. Because, from now, the competition is in the store. Okay? I don't know if you, do, you, you know Game of Thrones, but just imagine this girl on the throne, this is very special. And, uh, the, the very different thing, the, what is modifying the, the, the question is, before you got the retailers, they thought they were the king of the world, okay? They had this power on people. And today, it's completely different because of this iPhone or this smartphone, they've got the power in their hand. And as you can see, I don't know the girl, I think she's famous, but she is the customer now and you've got the retailers. And to be clear, I love this image. You've got, we are the customer, and they are, the sharks are the retailers, okay? And this is so true. And I've got to tell you, I'm psychology, so I'm, very spe I'm always uh, afraid to see that retailers are schizophrenic, okay? Because they don't know, they don't realize that there are the guy on the boat doing exactly what he wants, and they are to the sharks. They don't understand that they are, they've got the information by themselves. 
but it's true. It's strange. China did something very different for lots of reasons. They start after, they start after. Uh, just to remember, for those who know uh, Shanghai and Pudong, in, in 1990, there was nothing in Pudong. If you know Pudong now, it's uh, like New York, okay? So it's very, very, very quick. So they start later, and uh, they were focused not on product, on stores, on location, and so on. They were uh, focused on people. Just to remember what is the focus on retailers, and this is the focus of Chinese people, of uh, online there. So, in fact, they, want the, they focus on the fact that people want to buy everything right away and deliver anywhere. Okay, light teenagers. You are grown up now, but you've been a teenager before. So just remember how we were, and you understand how people <coughs> think about buying. So, and so on, they focus not only on uh, people, but on, on the family. They want to have a big picture of the family, to understand exactly who you are, which is very important. Not to sell you the product, but to, to see who you are. So in fact, okay, there's a problem. People, uh, let's say Alibaba or son, are focused on individual to whom they sell the product they want. It's a very different mindset. They, they, they deal with people to whom they sell the product they want. It's very, very different. And uh, so in, uh, Europe and even in China, in, uh, in, U in the U.S., sorry, was for, we, they were focused always and always on uh, selling products that they did before. So, and they want, they've got some product they want to sell to people, which is quite different. It's a different mindset, okay? Some have, want to deal with people to whom they want to sell product, the product they want, and the retailers. And then still now, we are focused on the product they want to sell to people. So we can say, okay, uh, why there is a different, uh, why China is accelerating the retail revolution? Because we can say we've got Amazon. That's true. Amazon is about 40% of the uh, e-commerce in the U.S. It's very important. And uh, <coughs> Alibaba is, you, I think you've heard about Alibaba and Timol yesterday. It's much, much more bigger. I was amazed when... Uh, Alibaba went to public and people understood at that time that it was a very, very big company. But what the difference between those two companies? Let's say that Amazon is focused on product and on people and website. They try to, uh, um, to improve the experience on the website. They try to improve how to deliver product with the drones. And they try also to go into uh, the city with, for example, the Amazon Go uh, in Seattle. I don't know if you know about Amazon Go. I'm sure you know. But it's, uh, the f let's say, the first step in the, the real life uh, shopping. While Alibaba is uh, working also on how improving the experience on the website, they're doing two things, uh, really. Working on uh, virtual reality which is important. I don't know if you've tested, but it's amazing. And they're working about gamification, okay? How to make people enjoy buying. I think the uh, CEO of Alibaba said that when you go to Amazon, you're, uh, it's not funny, but when you go to Alibaba, and when you're going to Alibaba and those uh, platforms, you're going to be happy. It's a good thing. But take second, and it's very important for my comprehension of a China, a China people, Chinese people, they, Alibaba invest in Suning, for example, for 20%. So just to learn, okay? Suning is one of the major co um, uh, competitor of Alibaba on the uh, computers and so on. And they buy 20% of the company just to learn. And they, uh, they did something very important. They buy Intim Retail, which is uh, <coughs> two uh, 29 department stores and 70 malls, which is real life because they know uh, to do business online, and they want to uh, apply exactly what they've done online, offline. And which is important to understand, <coughs> and this is for me something I've learned. I've learned from China. Chinese people test, they test and learn, and then they industrialize, which is quite different from what we do in Europe. For example, retailers, they're very afraid of trying things. They try a lot of things, but not really 
to learn about it and then to industrialize. They do this, which is important. Okay, so it's 11.11. 11. So I'd like to talk about this because one, <coughs> uh, you know about the, the key figures of the 11.11, one, uh, one, uh, 11, 11, sorry, in China. But I, want, I wanted to point out that, okay, the main question is they've got the infrastructure, the, lo the, the logistics to scale and the escort system to scale, which is important. They know how to scale. And we've got to learn about this because when you think about uh, in one day, Alibaba was able to deliver 460 million package in a day while UPS, for example, is 19 million. It's quite a difference. So it's not, I'm not saying that it's marvelous, it's not ex exceptional, but it's interesting because just to know, test, and learn and industrialize, which is important because we've got to learn about that. So, retailers, and let's say Alibaba, Timon, and so on. That means that if you focus on people, they know just, uh, the retailers just know about 50% of the people they work with, while the online <coughs> e-commerce platform knows about the uh, three, uh, 100%, which is important because it's the second thing I would I'd like to talk to you about. And then came the game changer, which is WeChat. You all know WeChat. I'm very interesting from a psychology point of view because it's very, very different. It's really the first personal life assistant. Really, really. That means it's a uh, um, digital extension of your body. Not this one, WeChat. They did a lot of things, they were focused on services before everything. And in fact, today, uh, in China, they all use WeChat for everything. You can pay, you can do a lot of things, etc., etc. And at the end of the th time, they were focused not in terms of what teenagers want, but what children want. Children want everything right away, just for me, and the user was wait. Which is very important, because from that point, it's a new way of seeing people and <coughs> uh, studying people. So, for me, and I, it's very important for me to explain this, Retailers have 15% of, of the information of a, per, a person. Let's say WeChat have everything, absolutely everything. It's a rolling sphere. That means that they've got information about, of course, who your friends are, of course, of what you do every day, but also what you buy, where you are, and what you like, everything, and it's permanent. Every day, every day, every day. That means that when you are a retailer, you've got to fight against someone who got every information about your customer every day, at every moment, which is quite complicated. So why, there is an, why is there the acceleration of uh, the retail revolution? I'm okay for the time. First, because uh, there is a disintermediation, disintermediation between people and retailers, okay? You've got... Someone between your, when you're a retailer, you've got to go through someone to touch your first co your customers, which is really important. And it's true, you've got the same thing with uh, <coughs> Twitter, with uh, Facebook and so on. But in fact, WeChat has everything, in it's all in one. So it's quite different. You can't fight. You can fight uh, against Facebook or Twitter, but it's quite complicated to fight against, uh, against uh, WeChat. You've got this information. The second way is because they've got all the information in real time for everything. So just imagine how to target people. It's quite simple because they've got the information. And third, because uh, they've got the, they know how to deal with big data. Let's say uh, they know how to deal with big uh, issues. They uh, test and learn. They've got a lot of things that we can have for us, okay? It's very important to understand that those three things are moving things, even not only in China, because we're working, for example, in Splio, with Splio, with Luxury Brand, the, the first presentation was very interesting, but in fact, some people who, work, who buy in Luxury are not only in China, and Chinese travel, so we have to know where they are, and so on and so on, and which is important with this uh, kind of information, because 
retailers, uh, e-retailers in China, in China, and also um, WeChat have this, inf uh, this experience. They can follow people wherever they are. So, what can they do? I'm good. Huh? <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> first, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, you've got to do to change your mindset. If you're a retailer, not if you're working in China, but in fact, if you're a retailer in this world, you've got to change your to change your mindset. And it, it's for some of you, it's in evidence, but it's not. <laughs> it's not uh, at all for retailers. But the first thing is to back to basis. Only individuals matter. The product is important, but in fact, you've got to know your people, the people you work with because it's only that matters. So you've got to start thinking you own the customers because a lot of uh, retailers think I, can't, I, I won't share my, info, my data because it's my asset. In fact, it's true it's an asset, but it's not the most important thing. You've got to, the real asset is the relationship with the customer. And so you've got to focus on um, individual you're in touch with the real thing. But technically, your CRM must be, must be real time because you got to find again someone who is real time, omni channel, and you got to use your CIM to create the emotion. That is the only thing which is difficult for people to uh, work with is emotion. But you've got to create the emotion. It's very easy for me to say. It's quite complicated to to do it. And then you've got to think about your strategy on this kind of, uh, um, of uh, WeChat, for example, because each time you do something with WeChat, you'll be sure WeChat is going to improve, info improve about how to use your own customers. So you've got to, each time you do a campaign on, on WeChat, you've got to, take, to bring back this information into your CRM. And then the real challenge for brands and retailers and more is to be in competition. That means they've got to work together. They've got to work together. That means malls, they've got, they got to have information about the POS. That means retailers must share information with the brands, which is quite complicated. They've got to share their personal data. They've got to, to share their logistics to provide the best service to the customer. They've got to <clears throat> uh, work together with the, th the CRM, share the data together to be sure they know the people, to have more than 50% of the information about the people. They've got to share their experience, their investment, for example. When you've got, for example, just Amazon, they invest $1.5 bi uh, billion dollars per, um, I think it's quarter, on his um, uh, informatique. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so it's quite complicated to fight against this. So you've got to share and to be together, in fact. And never to, go to, 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 to forget that the real boss is the customer and the people. Not a customer, just people. people. You are people, we are people. You have to think about what you want to understand that. So uh, I didn't want to talk too much about Spio, but I've got to do it because, and it's not good on this, but uh, because uh, I've got someone from the communication of Spio here, so I got to do it. So just to say that we're in different countries, uh, we are, um, we're about 120, and uh, we lot of, of customers, it's very good, and this is the customers we have, I think, uh, is big customers in different areas. So just to finish on it, the main point of everything is Everything is moving. It's the first revolution was the iPhone. The second, from my point of view, the second revolution is WeChat. And the third revolution is people, focused on people. Thank you very much.